Maggie Philbin was born in Manchester, but grew up in Leicester, where the family had relocated when her father got a job here. She attended Evington Hall Convent School on Spencefield Lane. Her early memories are of an English teacher who believed in her ability, a French teacher who took her to one side and said she might surprise herself if she put a bit more effort into actually learning the vocabulary before exams, and a physics teacher who cried when she did not take A-level physics. Maggie says because she'd already bought the textbooks. Maggie took A-levels in English, history, French, and German. She took a year out before going to university, working first of all in the admissions office of the University of Leicester. Maggie apologizes to any parents present in the audience who applied for admissions in 1974 and were casualties of her erratic filing. Next, she worked at the Haymarket Theatre, first as an usherette, and then as part of the lighting team. Lastly, she spent time as a researcher at Radio Leicester, uh, working with Sue Hillman and Ron Coles. She was inspired by these experiences, and she applied to Manchester to do a four-year course in English, in English and Drama. Her fellow students included Ben Elton and Rick Mayall, as well as a host of others who went on to be famous in broadcasting and the theater. Well, graduation loomed, and like you today, Maggie had to face the question, what do I do now? In the middle of her finals, a newspaper advertisement caught her eye. Do you want to be a top TV personality? Maggie lost no time in writing a tongue-in-cheek piece on why she was clearly well-suited to becoming a top TV personality. The faith of her English teacher had in her was clearly well justified, and she got the job presenting a three-hour-long TV program, The Multicolored Swap Shop. This was a family show introducing children to new experiences in an entertaining way. Maggie learned a huge amount from the team, including Noel Edmonds, then at the top of his game, Keith Chegwin and John Craven. Rosemary Gill was the editor who developed the groundbreaking Saturday morning TV system and who inspired Maggie with the breadth of her knowledge of all sorts of subjects. Maggie's daughters named after her. At this time, the team formed a band called Brown Sauce as a send-up to Top of the Pops. Much to their surprise, their record climbed the charts, and in 1981, they actually appeared on Top of the Pops with a number 15 hit, I Wanna Be a Winner. After four years at Swap Shop, Maggie was headhunted by the team of Tomorrow's World a prime-time TV program which showcased inventions in science and technology. At first, Maggie was apprehensive about uh, a move to a tightly scripted program after four years of complete freedom on Saturday mornings. As the job offer came the day before her wedding, she bought herself time to ask if she could have three weeks to think about it while she was on honeymoon. Well, Maggie accepted the Tomorrow's World job, and the rest is history. Maggie's first job at Swap Shop was mainly ad-lib directed at parents and children. Tomorrow's World was to totally different. Weeks of research and days of scripting and re-scripting were needed to perfect a three-minute item for the program. Maggie's concern about not having uh, a scientific degree evaporated as she realized that her natural curiosity led her to ask questions that others didn't, helping her to get to the heart of complex new inventions. In fact, when program producers were faced with an overcomplicated explanation, they would say that the item had to be magnified to make it meaningful to viewers who regularly watch Tomorrow's World. Live demonstrations of new inventions were a major feature of the program. However, however, they often failed to follow the script. Maggie said she learned to dread anything that was voice activated. The first demonstration of a voice activated mobile phone came to a complete standstill when the pitch of her voice changed due to the excitement of the live show. 
Maggie handled a broad range of technology, from wrangling with hovercrafts in the BBC car park to demonstrating the very first digital camera, which she, which she somehow managed to do despite the fact that the camera itself had been confiscated by the Tokyo Customs. In, few, in fact, viewers liked it when things went wrong, and Maggie and, and her colleagues had to ad-lib their way out of trouble in front of 10 million viewers. After eight years at Tomorrow's World, Maggie moved on to a wide range of other TV shows, including Bango's The Theory. She has, in fact, demonstrated that she is indeed a top TV personality, as the, as the advertisement for her first job had suggested. At, at, at present, Maggie leads Team Tech, a company she co-founded to promote widening participation in science and engineering, especially encouraging girls to take up technical subjects. In 2014, Maggie's work was recognized when she was elected president of the Institution of Engineering Designers and patron of the Council of Professors and Heads of Department of Computing. In 2016, Computer Weekly named her as the most influential woman of the year in information technology, and she was also awarded Digital Leader of the Year. She has honorary degrees from several universities, and in 2017, Maggie was awarded the OBE for services to promoting careers in STEM and creative industries. Mr. Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and Council, I present Margaret Elizabeth Philbin so that you may confer upon her the honorary degree of Doctor of Science. Love it. I, I like the way I have to have a special box to stand on. Um, I am just so thrilled to accept this honour, you know, here in my, my home city. Um, and, and it's very moving for me for a number of reasons. Um, I would so love my mum and dad to be here. Um, my sister's up in the balcony, which is wonderful. And as I've looked across this sort of sea of faces, you know, all of that, you know, enthusiasm and all of the exciting futures um, that all of you have in front of you, and then just sitting behind you, you know, your families, your supporters and your parents, it really is wonderful to see. Um, and I don't feel that your parents have seen quite enough of you today. So I'd like you all, stand up, find your parent, and then can we all give parents and supporters and families a massive round of applause? Because they're so proud of you today. So stand up, make the most of that moment, and really say thank you. Excellent. Right, you, you can all sit down now, otherwise they'll, they'll never ask me back. Um, it, it has just been lovely. We have a lovely view up here, and you just can't help but notice certain people. And there's a lovely little girl in the middle somewhere. She looked very young. She looked like she was about seven or eight. And I saw her blowing kisses to whoever it was who was stepping up here. It was just very lovely. Um, so today is obviously incredibly e e exciting, and there's, very, there's a huge amount to celebrate. Um, but whether you're sitting there and you already know what you're going to do, um, perhaps you've embarked already on you know, the, 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 the job of um, a lifetime or you're going into further research or you're weighing up your options I can tell you one thing for absolute certainty and that's that you have absolutely no idea what you are capable of and what you really can go on to achieve and I feel I was very lucky on the day when I collected my own first degree uh, because yes I had been offered what really did turn out to be the job of a lifetime but perhaps most importantly Rose who you've heard referenced in that lovely citation um, had taken me on one side and we had lunch in the BBC canteen because on the one hand, it was incredibly exciting to be given an opportunity to do a groundbreaking programme um, on live telly. But on the other hand, I had 
zero experience, and I knew that the potential for failure was enormous, and I was absolutely terrified. And Rose had that lunch with me, and she said, Maggie, I just want to say one thing to you, and that is, we've chosen you because you are you, and because you do things in your own way. And we don't want you to change that, because that's what we like. So don't try to be Sue Lawley or Frank Boff. Some of your parents might remember those people. Um, because we want you. And you will make mistakes, but make your own mistakes and learn from them. And I really want to pass those words on to you. Because being the best possible you that you can be, being completely authentic, will take you a huge distance. Because yes, you are carrying those degrees, but you've all got different things about your personality. And it'll be those things that really take you far in, in, in everything that you want to do. And I think when you are new to a company um, or an institution, it, you can often feel, as I did, very much out of your depth. But the thing that you bring to that company or that university is a fresh way of thinking. And the way you see things when you first start working, you will see them so differently to other people within those companies. And if you see the need for change, make sure that you do something about it. And it doesn't matter whether you do something about it at that moment, because sometimes that isn't possible, but make a note of it and make sure that you do change those things. Um, as an example, I, I was doing a hackathon um, with the BBC last um, Friday, and they did a 24-hour sort of exercise with all sorts of people, very experienced people, and um, people new to the BBC, about around diversity and how can we ensure that the way that we work really does reach audiences in the right way, really does reflect what people want to think um, and see and feel. Um, and there were sort of prizes given at, at the end of this exercise, and, and the outstanding idea came from a group of apprentices who had just been at the BBC for six months. So that is an example of how, as you can imagine, I love innovation and I love creativity. And seeing the world in a different way and understanding what needs to be done to make the world work much more efficiently or just simply to be a bit more fun um, is, is the way to create absolutely brilliant ideas and off the back of them, you know, amazing companies. So, um, a few tips. Be as creative as possible with your potential. So really define your script. Don't let others define you. Listen to people, listen to their advice, but you don't necessarily have to take it. And say yes rather than no, because saying yes will always take you further. Sometimes my blood runs cold when I realise I did hesitate before I accepted that Tomorrow's World job, because I was frightened that my lack of a science degree would hold me back. And listen, because intelligent listening will also take you a long way. And keep on learning. Never, never stop learning. And most importantly, be kind. Help others because it's what we're all here to do. And by helping others, again, your learning will move on to a completely different level. And please do this immediately. It's incredibly easy to think, oh, you know, I'm not CEO of a company. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, a leading figure in a university. You know, how can I possibly help shape the hearts and minds of, of others? But this is a really good time to do it. You're massively influential. You're so close in age to young people who may not have the wonderful support that you've enjoyed from your, your parents and your friends. Um, a group of um, young students in Wales um, entered our Teen Tech Award competition about four years ago. And their teacher said that when she first saw the video, um, the reaction of the kids had been, well, we're never going to be able to do this. We're not going to be able to get to the Royal Society. Um, but as soon as she signed up, we connected those young people with students from the local university and the local college. They went into that school to help those students with the electronics. And then the students in the school got through to the final Royal Society. They won their category. 
they went to Buckingham Palace and they collected an award. And two of those boys had never been outside Wales before. Um, they then took their idea to the Big Bang, where they won, and one of the boys was selected to represent the UK in America as Engineer of the Year, which was extraordinary, and it was down to the wonderful mentoring done by young people like yourselves, because young people can identify so much better with people like you than people like me, because you help them see that they can achieve and that they do have the qualities that they need to take them you know, a long way in life. Um, finally, um, I'd just like to thank the, the University Press Office for opening up what has come as a total surprise to me and a whole new work stream. Um, the press release that went out yesterday had a headline saying, tomorrow's World Reporter and Leicester Tigers champion a chairman were amongst the outstanding individuals to be honored by the University of Leicester. And some people misread this headline to think they were one and the same person. And I was slightly bemused by some of the messages I started getting over LinkedIn, um, because they included, and amongst them was the director of Network Rail, many people um, congratulating me and then offering their services on the um, Tigers executive board. Um, obviously, I am going to give their applications my full consideration and I will let all applicants know in due course. But, but seriously, thank you so much for this honour and I promise I will put it to very good use. Thank you very much indeed.